Building a model steam plant using two engines. This is part 7, the live steam test. The last one was also called part 7 because I made a mistake. So the previous video was actually part 6. And I'm sorry about making a mistake. I'll put it down to a senior moment because I is well old in it. And that's enough of being down with the kids. What I'm doing at the moment is fitting a tie wrap around this pipe to make sure that the gas doesn't leak from this temporary connection. This small Cotswold Heritage boiler plant has its own gas tank, but I don't have the adapters to fill it, and it's easier this way. I remove the gas pipe from the small tank on the baseboard and just push the silicone rubber tubing over the pipe union on the end of the pipe, and this will seal it fine. The first thing to do is to pump some water into the boiler, and for this I'm using the small attached hand pump. I got a comment from a viewer who was quite indignant because I called this a lift pump. And he said, no, it's a force pump, it's not a lift pump. If I can remember back to my school days, which was a long time ago. Right, the gas is lit. I'm sure I was taught that a lift pump and a force pump were basically the same design. But anyway, it's health and safety time. This is a carbon monoxide alarm. I have it fitted just over the bench to the right hand side. And the last time I mentioned this carbon monoxide alarm, I was inundated with keyboard warrior experts telling me I was doing it wrong saying that I should mount it lower down because carbon monoxide is heavier than air, etc, etc, etc. When I googled this, Google said it was an urban myth, so I'm going to leave it where it is. Besides which, if carbon monoxide is heavier than air, it will pool about at the bottom of the workshop near the floor, and I don't fall over much these days, I'll take more water with it. The burner seems to be very quiet on this boiler, I'm wondering if the jet's blocked, but anyway, I'll just leave it and see. What is this steam coming out of the chimney? Well, it's just condensation. Whenever you light a gas burner, or a coal fire for that matter, inside a boiler, you get a lot of condensation. Then as the condensation starts to boil away with the heat, you get a little bit of steam, which is quite encouraging. It tells you that the gas burner is at least providing some heat. Time for another completely common sense health and safety notice. When using a gas-fired steam boiler inside a building, make sure the building is well ventilated. And if you're using a coal-fired boiler, then you don't want to be doing it inside anyway. I can see that there's a bit of movement of the water inside the water gauge bobbing up and down, which means it's starting to boil. There's no pressure yet, so it's a good time to fill the displacement lubricators. This is very important. Always drain them first by undoing the tap at the bottom. That lets the water out. Then fill them with steam oil and put the cap back on. Displacement lubricators are a really good way of lubricating cylinders on small steam engines. In the case of this steam plant, the pair of displacement lubricators are situated on the turret. They're actually screwed into the main steam turret. Often these sort of things are screwed to the engines, but they can look a bit ugly. Displacement lubricators work anywhere in the steam line, really, apart from attached to the boiler. That wouldn't be too smart. But the point is that what they do is condense some steam to water, which falls to the bottom of the lubricator tank and displaces some oil that's pushed out into the steam line. Sometimes displacement lubricators are fitted with a control valve to regulate how much oil passes into the steam line. But this is not really necessary. If the hole is the right diameter in the cross pipe in the tank, they will work fine. The cooler that the displacement lubricators are, the more condensation will go on inside the tank and the more oil they will feed to the engines. If this steam turret was attached to the boiler, I would never mount the displacement lubricators on it. But because it isn't mounted to the boiler, and it's a long way from the boiler, then it's still going to be hot, but not that hot, so I should get sufficient condensation in the tanks to oil the engines. When the steam pressure in the boiler has reached about 30 pounds per square inch, I blow the whistle, and this is to clear the condensate from the steam pipe. And as you can see, there's lots of water coming out of it. As the water clears, the whistle's note gets louder and better. These steam engines are not fitted with drain cocks, so I'm very carefully opening the valve to see what happens. And it's not a major issue. Sometimes you get a hydraulic lock at each end of the cylinder, but this is not happening on the Cyclops engine. Before I run the engine continuously, I'm going to make sure there's plenty of oil on all the oiling points of the engine. Wherever anything is moving, it needs some oil. In this clip, the piston is at the bottom of the stroke, so it won't start. I left the steam valve open, so some steam gets through the engine to keep it warm. But now as the steam pressure's increased in the boiler, I think I'll turn it off. I've just noticed this is quite interesting. As I open the steam valve, the safety valve blows off. 
purely coincidental. I've taken the chuffing apparatus out of the chuffing chuffing pot because it was far too loud. It's up to the owner of the steam plant as to whether he wants to put it back in. And I have a steam leak. And no, it's not the union, it's my bad silver soldering. I was trying to be quite economic with this wire silver solder that I don't normally use, and I'm not going to use it again. I prefer the sticks of silver solder. It's a very simple fix though. I just removed the pipe and re-silver soldered it. Many viewers write in and say to me, well, why don't you do this and why don't you do that and generally tell me how to do the job. And I've had lots of viewers telling me how much easier it is to put string round a pipe using an electric drill. Yes, OK, that seems like common sense. Put the pipe in your electric drill, rotate the pipe, wind the string onto the pipe, then bend it. But I've already talked about the bending problem, not to mention the fact that if you have to re-silver solder the pipe, it would destroy the string. So I think I'll carry on doing it my way, and now the end is near and so I face the final curtain, etc. And that's it from me on this one, I'm not going to say anything else, I'm just going to show the engines running and just let you enjoy the poetry of motion, which is a steam engine. Sorry, I almost forgot, there's some useful information right at the end of this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.
that's what I would call a successful steam test. The chuff pot has been de-chuffed and everything runs very well. When I got back into the house, the postman had been, and he delivered this. This was kindly sent to me by a viewer by the name of John, and it's a boiler kit. So in a short while, I'm going to be making a boiler to show you how to do it. And that will be fun, because I've never actually made a boiler. <laughs> 